On this edition of Showcase, I'll be talking with Louis Langre about his career accomplishments so far and what he has planned for the inaugural season as the new music director of the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra. Stay tuned. Showcase is coming up next. Hi, I'm Barbara Keller, and welcome to this edition of Showcase. On today's program, I'm joined by the new music director of the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra, Louis Langre. Thanks for appearing, Louis. We're so excited that you're here in Cincinnati. Everybody's, your posters are all over town. Have you seen your face everywhere? Oh, yes, yes. and <laughs> well, I hope I will do my best to deserve it. You know, when I, I wear, I was <coughs> in, a, in a shop and there were just so many advertisements and somebody looked at me like that and said, are you that guy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then, yeah, it's, it's great that here in Cincinnati so many people speak about their orchestra. This mm -hmm. is very rare. It means that this orchestra is not only giving some entertainment, you know, some plus, Mm -hmm. to the city, but that it's part of the city. Mm -hmm. And that's fantastic, I think. Well, it's the core, really, of all the other arts, made the b opera, the ballet. Um, it's the symphony that is... The symphony is part of all of that. All, all exactly. of that, yeah. And without a symphony, you're not going to have the others. I, I, maybe somebody does, but they're probably not very good. Probably not as good as we would like them to be. So you're you're French. So what's a little bit about your background? I was born in Alsace, which in France is a region over the Rhine. So so you're back home. <laughs> I feel at home here, exactly. And it has not only the particularity to be next to the Rhine, but because of that, like here, of course here it's. We are in the United States, but in this city, and I'm speaking also on the music side, the roots of the, the birth of the orchestra comes from that culture. Mm -hmm. So in, in Alsace, it's part of France, of course, but Germany is very near. Mm -hmm. And from all the regions in France is where, where music has this strong, mm -hmm. be, being just part of the life yeah. of people. So yes, definitely for all these reasons, mm -hmm. I feel at home here. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we've we seen a rebirth of over, our Over the Rhine, which you're now a great part of, with the park where you did Luminosity. Tell us a little bit about Luminosity before we go on. That was an amazing experience. That just to have this conjunction, can we say that? Mm -hmm. Convergence of what we see and these people were just genius with these amazing, powerful, mm -hmm. beautiful images. And the level of this orchestra on so many different styles. I think also one very important thing is that people didn't come to go to a classical concert they just came to experience something. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, they didn't feel, well, the tempo of Polero was maybe too slow, or no, mm -hmm. no, I think it was too fast, or no, no, I think it was the right tempo. Mm -hmm. They didn't care. They were in it, enjoying it. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it was this huge smile of feeling together, enjoying through art, Mm -hmm. this feeling of being part of the com community. So that was in mm -hmm. front of the hall. I want the whole season to be the same inside the hall. Well, we're here to help you make it, Thank make you. that happen because it takes a lot of people um, to make great music in a city and we're here to support you and we think it's great. And tell us a little bit about your plans. Well, this year's all planned out and tell us a little bit about this year. 
I wanted, first of all, this first inaugural concert to be sort of emblematic of and uh, give a symbol of where we want to go, what you want to cultivate, and the rich and fabulous tradition and history of this orchestra. First, they, we needed to have a, a piece that everybody know, everybody can whistle. Pa -pa -pa -pam, mm, right. pa -pa -pa -pam. Even if you have never been to a classical mm -hmm. concert or orchestral concert, you know this, this mm -hmm. tune. And uh, this piece, this masterpiece, is uh, just part of the history of the orchestra. On the very first season of the orchestra, it was already played. It has been played so often. So it's part of the DNA of, our, of, yeah. of, of the orchestra, of the music of the city as well. Mm. And uh, of course it has its German music, its Beethoven music, mm -hmm. but the meaning, the message, the musical message is just universal. Mm -hmm. And we have the same thing with Lincoln Portrait mm -hmm. Copland, which is actually a piece which was premiered in 1942 by the, the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Me neither. I didn't know it yeah. uh, uh, before. And, well, this, this is something everybody can be very proud of. Mm -hmm. So who could also have... This is American music, of course, but like Beethoven, with a sort of universal mm -hmm. message. Uh, and it's such an honor, a deep privilege to have Dr. Maya Angelou being the narrator of uh, this, uh, these words of this piece. And Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra, even with this wonderful sound, deep sound, which probably has his origin from this love of German repertoire, mm -hmm. also is an American orchestra with the sparkling mm -hmm. attack, precision. Yeah. It, and uh, it has a tradition, as I said just before, commissioning so many pieces, premiering so many mm -hmm. pieces. And I wanted in the first program to have American music and contemporary music. We are mm -hmm. not in a museum where we have to just to preserve something. We have to commission pieces to build, to be part of the history of the music making. And Jennifer Higdon, wonderful composer, uh, has composed On a Wire, uh, which is a sort of concerto with uh, uh, some uh, eight, uh, six players from eight blackbirds. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was, I was a pianist before, before I was conductor. I couldn't imagine that a piano could produce so amazing, completely unexpected for me, sound. It will be, I mean, it's overwhelming what, what she just does with a material that everybody knows, the sound of a piano. So come and listen and enjoy what mm -hmm. a piano could produce as completely unknown, unexpected sound. But I think like, like just this piano thing, an institution like Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra should be also a place of experimentation. And that's the success of Luminosity. That, was it a classical concert? Yes and no. It was just an amazing moment for everybody. It's not question, there is no question of saying, oh, I don't like music or I would mm. prefer something else. It's music is part of the life. Every day, every year, we have some problems which at the end we solve, we resolve. Beethoven's symphony or Lincoln portrait from the sort of fatality and ashes and darkness from the beginning suddenly elevates us mm -hmm. and make us feel the possibility or the accomplishment of a better world. And music speaks about that. Absolutely. And I think lemon, luminosity sort of, uh, the fact that you, the music was there, 
with the lights. It was sort of in person what you're describing, what you wish could, can and does happen with a great symphony piece. Absolutely. You feel illuminated, and that's what luminosity really was. Absolutely. But the people of Landor were so gifted, because quite often the danger, because the images are so strong, so the music could be sort of illustrative or, or we weakened like a, just a su supporting the images mm -hmm. here we had something completely different everything was in perfect balance mm -hmm. and it was not only about what you heard or what you saw it was this wonderful vibration created from the two things not being redundant but being together in balance mm -hmm. well oh, well you know tim maloney i'm sure you met tim of well course. you cooked dinner for Tim in yes. Paris. I happen to know that. <laughs> yes, he was very, very excited. Um, he was the genius behind the whole thing. And he uh, said, you're going to do it again. Oh, I yes. So. yes. And it's such a privilege to work with, yes, with Tim, with all, all, the, all, all the team, mm -hmm. because you have people who have so strong visions and dreams and also have this wonderful pragmatic way of making these dreams reality mm -hmm. and having both of them is something amazing so thank you Tim. <laughs> yes right tell us just a little bit about as a you know I, I think it's interesting that your title is music director uh, and most people say all right, we have a new conductor, but music director encompasses a lot more than conducting. Is that, am I correct? In you that? are absolutely correct. Okay. It's, of course, my main job is rehearsing and rehearsing and conducting concerts right. with the same group. The different, main difference between uh, being a guest conductor and uh, being music director, guest conductor is wonderful you have a like a date mm -hmm. but being music director is getting married <laughs> so you can dig in you can cultivate you can really have a much stronger and deeper relationship but it's not about seducing it's ha having a shared vision of where where to go the conductor on stage is the only musician who doesn't produce any sound mm -hmm. and the conductor is here to make everything possible that mm -hmm. the condition of musical dialogue and right. also having worked on ensemble balance intonation all this technical thing then make sort of just a direct relation between the audience and the music. Mm -hmm. And what I loved in Luminosity, they didn't say, oh, you conducted so well. They said, what a great evening we spent tonight. That's so much better. It was, and you, I, I understand, and that's what you want any audience to think when they, when they walk out, but the conductor really has so much to do with how much the audience gets out of and Oh yes, like, I'm not minimizing yeah, my role, yeah. <laughs> not at all. It's just, yeah, the, as, as you said before, being music director is not only conducting the best concert possible. It's being part of the community, being part of the city, making, I mean, we all know that an orchestra is quite expensive, but for, evenings, moments, like luminosity, it is priceless. Mm -hmm. You need that. It's it just so much better to live in a city where in the middle of the city, in the middle of the center of the city, you don't have here a cathedral or a city hall. You have a temple of music. I think this, this symbol that through art, of course you can discover and rediscover so many pieces you love or you don't know, 
And the role of the conductor is to give people pieces they love, but also pieces they could love and discover. So that in the middle of, of the, this, this hall, there is a temple of art, that it's through art that people can feel so well together. I think the, the message of historic message of this, this city is wonderful, is unique, and I know people are very proud of it, but maybe they don't know how unique it is and how unique they are. Well, I, you're, that was actually your debut in Cincinnati, right? Luminosity was the first time you had conducted, or no, no, no I, you did. Oh, yes, right. Um, I had, tell us. I had all the steps. I had first the amazement. Of course, I knew I had uh, CDs and uh, I knew about this orchestra, but I, it was the first time I was conducting it, and Brahms Symphony. You know, in a, in a second, it's not about. Yeah, this might be. Little, I love that, but I should maybe work on that. It just felt that we were speaking the same language. Mm -hmm. It was easy. It was natural. It was evident. And so after I conducted other concerts, so when Trey Devi asked me, would you like to be the next music director of the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra? Instantly I said, yes, I would love to. Because... Yeah. Because I know that starting from that basis, we can build something extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Then I was music director designate, and now this yeah, week this is it. I'm music director. <laughs> so <laughs> that's right. a, the real new chapter of the book of my life. And this weekend is your first con first concert. Friday, Saturday. Sunday, first series of concerts, Jennifer Higdon on a wire, Copeland, uh, Lincoln Portrait with Dr. Maya Angelou narrator, mm -hmm. Beethoven Symphony Number no. 5. And the week after, we have One City, One Symphony, which is also thanks to CET, one of the, the projects that we make together, and that's so important also. We are living in a world where you have new infos, new things, every, every second. Look at video clips. It needs to keep attract, uh, uh, yeah, that people don't change. Right. Actually, one city, one symphony is the answer or the antidote to that. It's let's stop. Let's just stop mm -hmm. for some time. And instead of discovering new pieces for us all the time and being distracted by new, 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 mm -hmm. let's stop, let's enjoy, let's open this wonderful book. Let's not only discover or rediscover this piece, but through this piece, let's rediscover also our own sensibility mm -hmm. and sensitivity. That's essential. Well, we're we're absolutely looking forward to it. It's it's so exciting to to have you here. And people had their first, um, not their first look at you if they came to the concerts, but that you didn't have thirty five thousand people at the concerts that you conducted beforehand. So thirty five thousand people had a great uh, opportunity to feel as if they met you, and and an absolutely fabulous evening. I wanted to ask you. Um, about your cooking, if that's all right, you're a sh you're a great cook. No, yeah, but I made. I think it was good. <laughs> you, foie gras. So did everybody else. Uh, foie gras, you know, foie gras. You have to start days in advance, mm -hmm. and uh, having different steps. If you miss a step, you just have to put it in uh. the trash. So pressure was very high, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, you know, the conductor's life is quite often so busy, hectic, new pieces, travel, jet lag, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I had 
10 days in Paris. And a great thing when you want to relax is not just staying in your bed and uh, it's to do, to focus, to give you full energy on, mm -hmm. on something else. So Tim was so generous on every level that I think I should, this is probably the best way to thank him. There's no better way than food. I mean, what gifts do we really need except a really, really great French dinner? So it sounds like you are uh, a very talented cook. But as it's well. the and same. It's the same thing as a concert at the end, because a great dinner or a great concert is when you after at the end you just feel transformed. You feel well. You feel. It's not only saying, oh, that's so good, and what, what you want to know, the recipe, and, want to, and what, what did you put, how long did you cook mm -hmm. it, and uh, was it braised, or uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's, life is beautiful. And I think at the end of luminosity, people had that feeling. They just feel, felt different. They felt well, and not about questioning the did they do this repeat or not or it's not about that it's it's just thanks to art can be cuisine can be music can be <laughs> sculpture painting etc just suddenly breathing higher mm -hmm. feeling so mm -hmm. well that's the, the what you know what we are so excited you're here we are anticipating that that's how we're going to feel after each concert um, you're 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 gonna you're just gonna be a great presence in the city. I know that just from talking to you a few minutes. I met your wife Amy. She was here ahead of you, partying. Yes, absolutely <laughs> was. And you have two children. Yeah. And do have you found a place to live? Yet? Yes, a wonderful place. And uh, so we have spent uh, ten days school hunting mm -hmm. and uh, house hunting. Mm -hmm. And. What a beautiful city. You know, I live in Paris now for many years, decades even. Um, and it is a beautiful city, but I think the quality of life here is just amazing. It's just, and in, in Paris, yes, you have wonderful buildings, mm -hmm. but go to Union Terminal. Yeah. It is a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had been last year, my wife and our two children haven't gone. They were speechless. And did you notice the murals that are at the airport, which yes. were at Union Terminal? Can you oh, imagine yes. what that was like when those were there intact? And you'll find so many wonderful things in this city, just as we're going to find how many wonderful things there are about you. We feel like we can, the city can connect with you because you have embraced us. And uh, just in a, the final few minutes, you chose us as we chose you because you had conducted the orchestra and you had a feeling that this was what, this was going to be what you wanted to do. Um, was there anything else about the, your experience of being here other than like, like the architecture or did they take you on a tour of the city to show you different neighborhoods or? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And just when you're house hunting, you see many, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. many diverse neighborhood. It's just feel the right place with the right orchestra. I mean, and such a level. I don't know if everybody realizes here mm -hmm. how privileged we are all to have an orchestra with musicians and everybody on, on that level. level. And not only is the level, but the spirit together. That's amazing. But yes, it I felt so welcomed. I mean, when, when you have people welcoming with so much generosity and naturel, and we it's really not fake yeah. enthusiasm yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It's welcome, welcome here. 
it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. Well, we really mean it, and we are going to see a lot of you, not just at Music Hall, but lots of places. And I, we really, really appreciate your coming today. We know this is a whirlwind of opportunities. Uh, t for people to get to meet you and we want them all to see you again very soon at Music Hall and it, it's, a, it's a new era for the symphony and we, we feel as you do. This is our symphony and now you're our conductor, our music director. So thank you so much. We, we just loved having you here and I'm sure we'll have, find some more projects for you to do with CET because... I'm thrilled. <laughs> To, uh, the, about all all those projects, this is a place where, when you have people speaking about dreams, it's always fertile ideas, mm -hmm. and to realize them is Here just we unique. Are. Voila! Thank you. Oh, thank you. For more information about the Cincinnati Symphony and Pops Orchestra, please visit their website at www.cincinnatisymphony. Dot org. You may also call their box office at 513-381-3300. To watch all of our showcase episodes again on demand, you may do so at our website at cetconnect.org forward slash showcase. Thank you for watching. I'm Barbara Keller. Have a great night. Mm -hmm.